Okay, thanks, Aaron. Um, the big picture here for the next 45 minutes is I'm going to talk for a few minutes and then turn it over to Dan for what he did down at uh, Iowa State, and then I'll take the last 10 minutes or so. Uh, but about uh, about 10 years ago, we had a, a couple of uh, producers and a couple of extension agents give us a call, said that they were observing some blue flames that would move across the uh, surface of the uh, swine manure in these deep pitted barns. And uh, it was just kind of a phenomena where it'd take, oh, maybe 45, 60 seconds to move from one end of the building to the other, but it was just like a blue flame. And uh, once it went past, that was over with. Then about three years later, we started seeing some uh, bigger flash fires, some poofing, uh, up to the point where we did see some building explosions there. So we started raising our eyebrows and started getting into a uh, little more of the uh, details, kind of explaining what in the world's going on. But this is the type of material that we're dealing with here in the way of foam. And the uh, foam, it's quite gelatinous, quite thick. Uh, you really can't pump it. If you try to stir it, it doesn't pop any type of bubbles. Um, but it is thick enough that it and grows enough that it will move up to the uh, through the slats and uh, bury pigs. Uh, we do have some pictures where all we can see is the uh, ears, the snout sticking out of the foam. Uh, consequently, the producer had to move the pigs, but uh, it does grow very rapidly and uh, comes up through the slats there. Uh, like I said before, you really can't pump the material. You can't pop any of the bubbles, the foam. Um, so it can be quite frightening. Um, you kind of take a look at this, pay attention. Notice this is the uh, true indication of the issue. Uh, you can see that there's uh, flames coming out there whenever some of the pockets of methane in the uh, foam do pop out. So it is quite serious uh, situation here when it comes to this foam. Uh, here's some pictures of some of the destruction that uh, we've seen. Uh, it can be anywhere from just slight uh, destruction, warping of tin ceilings, uh, melting of uh, any type of plastic pipe uh, feeders uh, to complete building destruction, loss of uh, animal life, which is unfortunate, but uh, it can be quite serious when it comes to some of these explosions and flash fires here. Now, after we started seeing this, uh, representatives, uh, engineers, animal science, biochemists from nine states on a regular basis here in the upper Midwest, we got on monthly conference calls. And we just, at this point, we're just really brainstorming to see what world was going on. If we can come up with any type of cause or commonality or what our next move is uh, to see where we can get some proposals to study this phenomenon. The one thing that we kind of did conclude here was uh, it's only specific to swine deep pit. Uh, this excludes North Carolina since their manure handling systems are outdoors and they didn't uh, really uh, see any foaming there from the out outdoor standpoint. Uh, beef dairy, uh, my recollection is in the last 10 years, we've only seen three real incidents of uh, foaming. Uh, so this is really specific to deep pitted swine barns. The other frustrating thing is, is that we would talk to producers that would have foaming, but they'd say not all buildings are representative or experience this foaming. For example, we could have five, six buildings there sitting there, three, four of them foam, one or two don't. And same management, same feed, same genetics, same age of the building style, uh, just kind of drove us nuts trying to figure out what in the world was going on. In 2010, we started a, a producer survey just to see what the extent was. Uh, this was strictly a volunteer basis, uh, went across six states. Uh, what we found over that winter of 2010 to 2011 was that uh, 24 sites, uh, about 24% of the sites had foaming. So a quarter of the buildings, quarter of the pits had, and that's a pretty good number there. About 60% of the producers said they had at least one pit foam. Of those, 
60% of the producers, 6% of the total had had a flash fire. Of those 60%, three quarters of the rooms were empty. In other words, it was a time when all out, all in type system where they were down for a couple days and they were in there doing repair work or cleaning work. Um, and this is when they noticed that there was a flash fire. 31% uh, or so was the time when they were in the fall agitating, pumping out the manure. At this time, what were the ventilation levels that we asked? About half said they were minimum or more than minimal. They had them up, turned up to maximum. About 40% said minimal and 15% said they didn't have any of the ventilation system turned on. In 2012, the uh, Iowa Association stepped forward with a major funding initiative to really get down and look at what the causation of this uh, uh, pit foam is and to see if we come up with any type of predictors, if we can take samples or something in the weather is going to cause it to uh, uh, start foaming and then come up with some type of mitigation uh, recommendations. Uh, so Iowa came up with a major, major uh, funding initiative on this. Others with minor, Minnesota Pork Board National, uh, we have a rapid uh, agricultural response fund here in the state, and then the three or various agricultural experiment stations and extension service. The overall goal uh, of this uh, long-term proposal here was to be able to determine this causation, find testing protocols, and then come up with some sort of a risk factor or so that uh, we may be able to switch or, chause or, or change in the system in order to reduce the probability of foaming. And this was a uh, cooperation across three states, uh, Illinois, Iowa, and Minnesota, and that incurs about half of the swine or pork that's being produced, especially in the deep pits. We divvied up the duties here, Iowa State, uh, along with our USDA ARS uh, station down there in Ames. They did feeding trials. They were looking at chemical composition, uh, methane production, and then uh, foaming potential. Uh, up here in Minnesota, we looked at survey, talking to the surveys tabulated that, did some minor microbial analysis, and also looked at foaming potential. And then uh, University of, I of Illinois, their responsibility was to do an extensive microbial analysis and to come up and organize the data and to be able to come up with some sort of a statistical, some sort of modeling to be able to predict or anticipate when foaming occurred. 